uh, we're gonna move on to looking at the circuit breaker that we implemented, all right? That circuit breaker that we've implemented is not quite what we want because notice what's happening. You have one method which is calling two APIs and if any one of those API fails, you're gonna break the circuit, right? This can be better, right? So let's say this uh, particular service is calling uh, the movie info service and the ratings data service. It's actually the other way around, right? It calls the ratings data service first, gets the ratings data, and then calls the movie info service. Now, let's say one of those services has failed. The way we've implemented it now, this is going to return like a fallback method, right? It's one rating for value zero, no movie information. But consider this. Consider, let's say the ratings data service is fine. The movie info service is what's slow or what's down or what uh, that's the circuit that's tripped, all right? This is return valid data, right? It's return, okay, this guy has seen five movies and these are the ratings for all those five movies. Granted, you cannot get the movie information, but still it's helpful to return that data and not have the whole thing return a fallback hard-coded response, right? So the way we've implemented is less than ideal. You have put a hysterix command annotation to the main, the main API method, which is calling those two. So if any one of those APIs fail, you're gonna get the fallback, which is not ideal. If you wanna be a bit granular, imagine this. Imagine I were to break this out into two separate methods, right? This one method, I'm gonna break it into two methods. I'm gonna have a method that calls the rating data service, I'm gonna have a method that calls the movie info service. And I'm gonna have a fallback for this guy. I'm gonna have a fallback for this guy. So if the ratings data service fails, I'm gonna have a fallback hard-coded ratings data response. If the movie info service fails, I'm gonna have a hard-coded fallback movie info response. So let's say this guy is slow, right? Movie info service is slow and we have five ratings you're gonna get back, what this is gonna return then is those five ratings, valid rating values, but the movie information is going to be, no, we are unable to find movie information, right? That's better than not returning anything at all. So you wanna have more granularity in your fallback mechanism, all right? This is what we're gonna be doing. We're gonna enhance our code to make things more granular in the fallback mechanism. So first thing we're gonna do is, we're gonna split the method up. As long as we have just one method, we can only have one fallback, right? That's not cool. So we're gonna split it into two methods, one method that calls each API, and we're gonna have individual fallbacks for each API, and then the main API doesn't need a fallback because all the API calls are covered. They have their own fallbacks. So the main API, which is calling these two methods, doesn't need a fallback. So we're gonna remove that, all right? So this is, here's how it's gonna work. I'm gonna switch to the code and, um, here are the two API calls that this method is making, right? So I have uh, the REST template get for object, uh, which is uh, calling the first API. I'm gonna extract method. I'm gonna call this get user rating, all right? So I have that pulled out into a separate method, which is calling the ratings data service. And this is the part which is calling the movie info service. So I'm gonna extract this method out Extract method, get catalog item is a good name. We use that. So we have extracted these two methods out, get user rating, get catalog item, right? Simple so far. I'm gonna clean this lambda a little bit here. All right, so I've extracted the method out. Now this is a good opportunity for us to add the hysterix command and fallback method for both the get catalog item and the get user rating. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna copy the systrix command line and um, paste this on top of the get catalog item. I'm gonna call this get fallback catalog item, right? And uh, the user rating, get fallback user rating. A lot of people like to have conventions so that the fallback uh, method name is similar to the actual method name that's being fallen back. So, okay, so I have uh, the fallback user rating. 
I'm going to copy the method signature because again, remember, it's uh, it's good to have the method signature the same as the thing that's being fall back. So one fallback method for that and one fallback method for this. Copy the method name, create an empty method. So yeah, we have two methods that have fallbacks and uh, we have the two fallback methods. All right, next, we're gonna add some hard-coded logic for each of these fallback methods, all right? Just some hard-coded data. For the fallback user rating, I'm just gonna create a new user rating class, instantiate it, new user rating. Uh, what I can do here is I'm actually I can set the user ID over here, right? So it takes in the user ID. I know what the user ID is because this is what the user has sent, right? I didn't have to make an API call for it no chances of failure, I'm just gonna set it there. And uh, I'm going to hard code. Let's say I hard code just one user rating, all right? I'm gonna do uh, arrays dot as list. And I'm gonna instantiate one rating class. In case you don't know, the rating class is basically the movie ID and uh, the rating, all right? So the movie ID is a string, I'm gonna give it ID zero, and the rating is zero. And uh, just return this user rating instance, right? Completely hard coded. This is um, this is what's setting the hard coded rating object, right? I'm going to hard code it and return it as the fallback mechanism. Again, remember, no dependencies here. Very little chance for failure over here, right? That's what's the fallback. All right, we're going to do something similar for the catalog item. All right, so get fallback catalog item. I just need to create a hard coded uh, catalog item class. I'm just going to copy this return statement. And uh, the catalog item, I'm gonna have a hard-coded name, movie name, not found, right? Some way of telling that this is not the name of the movie, it's an error condition. Uh, as long as uh, nobody makes a movie called movie name not found, <laughs> we should be good, all right? So this catalog, get catalog, now has uh, these two methods. And uh, since each of them have a fallback, I can actually remove the systrix command at the top, right? The main API method doesn't need a fallback anymore because the points of failure, the two API calls that could potentially fail, they have their own fallbacks. So the main API does not need a fallback. And uh, get catalog, uh, it kind of looks nice now, don't you think? It's uh, the methods have been extracted out and uh, they all have their own fallbacks and you have more granular level of fallback. All right. Now, if I were to run this as is, I'm going to get an error. Can you guys guess what the error is? Like the, the way the code is right now, if I were to run it, it's not going to work. I'm going to get an, get an error. The error is that the fallback doesn't get picked up at all, right? So the fallback mechanism doesn't run. Uh, if I were to bring one of these services down, so let's say movie info service or the ratings data service, if I were to bring that service down, Hystrix should by default switch to the fallback method, right? It won't happen. Can you guess why? The answer is because of the proxy class. This is why I told you it's important to understand uh, the proxy class because here's what's happening, right? The proxy class is a wrapper around the instance of the API class, all right? So let's say you have um, a service, right? You have mark um, a spring service with the stereotype at service. So you, you mark it as a spring bean, right? When you have a class like that, or you even need a REST controller, which is what we're doing right now, right? We have a REST controller, which has this Hystrix command. So when you have a spring bean, when you have a spring instance, which has the Hystrix command, what Hystrix is doing is it's wrapping it in a proxy so that whoever is holding on to the instance, they're holding on to the instance of the proxy and they're not holding on to the instance of the API class itself. So when they make a call to what they think is the API class, but it's actually an instance, it's that proxy instance which has control. It has the ability to intercept that call and do things with it. Right. So when somebody, you know, when we did that uh, one fallback previously before this refactor, who was calling that method? 
it was the spring framework because it had the instance it was an external call coming in because somebody hit the url and you had mapped that url to the method it's calling the method it thinks it's calling the method on the class but it's actually actually calling the method on this proxy and the proxy has the ability to say hey the service is down i'm going to call the fallback all right very good now in this case with this refactoring who is calling the method which has the hysterix command annotation it's not an external class instance which holds on to the proxy it's actually a method of that class itself all right so the control is already inside the control is already here there is one method somewhere over here which is calling this method which is annotated with hysterix command so where's the proxy class here the proxy class is totally out of the picture all the action is happening inside. There is one method of the class calling another method of the class. That's actually the reason why the fallback mechanism doesn't work. Hystrix doesn't have a say here. If it's an external class calling this, Hystrix has a say because it can intercept it. But if it's the same class, it's methods inside the class, and that's calling something which needs circuit breaking, well, Hystrix has no say in it. Hystrix doesn't have an opportunity to intercept two methods calling here and say, hey, now I need to implement fallback functionality. Hystrix has no control over that. So that's a problem. And that's a problem with the way Hystrix has been implemented in this case. So the only way out, the only way you can solve this problem is by taking that method out into another class, into another Spring service or a Spring Bean or something like that, and having the main API method call not another method of the same class, but to a method of another instance. So once that happens and you auto-wire that instance to this guy, guess what instance it gets? It gets the Hysterix proxy and everything is good. Now it's gonna call that and then since it's another instance, Hysterix proxy is gonna intercept and it's gonna do the fallback, all right? Very important to remember, if it's methods within the same class, Hysterix is not, Hysterix is not gonna work. 